Hey guys, welcome to this uh, Fusion tutorial. So today we're going to be creating this scene in Fusion. So this scene consists of a render from Blender, which is only the um, the jet engine you see here. The rest, the background, uh, the flames, the smoke, the sparks, anything but the uh, engine itself is uh, created in Fusion. And this is a quite a long tutorial. So this is part one. And in this part, we'll be focusing on uh, creating a 3D projection setup with an Alembic file from Blender, uh, as well as uh, your actual render on the HDRI and stuff, so that you can uh, continue to do really cool things in, uh, in compositing. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Click this icon here to import a loader. So this is the uh, render. Uh, it's a multi-layer EXR. And then I like to go into the flow with the cursor, right click, and then uh, click on force source tile pictures and mask tile pictures. That way um, the thumbnails of the uh, nodes are a little bit more uh, easier to distinguish and work with. So right now we are actually looking at the ambient occlusion pass instead of the um, combined beauty pass. So we need to just uh, do a quick correction on there. So if you go into the loader, uh, and then uh, into the format tab, change the red from uh, view layer AOR to combined R, and then do that for green, blue, and alpha as well. So combined green, combined blue, combined alpha. Now we have something looking a lot more like our render. However, you can notice that uh, the colors are very crushed. That's because uh, I exported it in the ACES color space which is uh, essentially a version of linear color space. So we would like to make a few changes so that we can actually view it how it's supposed to look like. But the thing is that when you're compositing media from uh, a few different sources uh, that come in uh, multiple color spaces, linear color space is a very nice place to stay and work in. Um, so we would like to keep the, the linear space active, but we don't want to look at the colors being crushed like this. So to be able to look at the colors normally while working in linear, if we just come up here to this grid, uh, click it, and then under the arrow menu, go into gamut view lot and click the arrow again, edit, and then we change the source space to ACES CG and the output space to, let's say sRGB in this case. Oh, we can also uh, pre-divide, post-multiply, um, check that box. So now we are actually converting the footage from uh, ACES CG color space to sRGB, but we are only doing it for the viewer so that it's just for us to see while in reality we are still in this linear space. Also, let's make some quick adjustments to the um, frame range. So our render is frame 1 to 200. So let's also just decrease the entire area to 200. So like so. Now our render fills the whole frame range for us. All right, uh, next thing is to uh, import the Alembic file. File, import Alembic scene. And then in this menu, if you find yourself struggling to match the camera moves to the render, then sometimes this is the problem. I had a project once where this checkbox was enabled and I just couldn't match the movements of the render and the camera until I disabled this and it was like a ha aha moment for me. So I've yet to encounter an issue where I need to enable this again. Okay. Now we get a lot of uh, nodes, as you can see. So the way this is um, set up is that we have a, a merge 3D here called ABC. This is essentially the core of the Alembic file, as you can see here. So we have a 3D scene. And this is the scene exactly as it was in Blender. We have a camera and we have all of these other uh, shape nodes connected to this merge here, which is all objects parented to a essentially an empty in Blender. And we have this merge here that holds the animation. So that's the quick explanation as to why there are so many nodes. Click this button up here to toggle uh, lighting off and on. Now, if you click anywhere on the mesh, you can see very quickly that certain nodes are being selected. Oh, and one thing that's a little 
bit of an issue when it comes to importing lambing meshes is that they are stacked very closely together. So we actually have to go and undo the source tile pictures here so that we can see all of them better. But that's just for this part. We will enable it once we're done. So right now we have to choose a point on our uh, model that we want smoke to come from. For speed's sake, we are just gonna create our own emitter shape and place it somewhere on the model so that it tracks it nicely. For now, we can actually go back and enable this again. Right click for style pictures and then go into this merge, right click and then hit select and select everything upstream. There you go. Now you automatically selected all of these. Hit Control G. Now we have them all into one group. So if you just view this, you can see we still have the model, but it's in here. You can also rename this uh, F2 Jet Engine. Let me just move this a bit closer to the to the other nodes here. Now we're going to be creating a um, emitter shape. So um, Shift Space Merge 3D. Click shift space, shape, 3D. View this, change the shape to a cylinder, and then go into transform, rotate it. We can actually pipe this into the merge we created after the group. View that. Now you can see they're in the same space. Now if you view the animated parent, you can also see that our cylinder is moving with the model. So let's just place this somewhere sensible on the model itself. So this is essentially the shape that we will be emitting the particles from. So sparks, fire, smoke, all of that. So it needs to look like it's coming from inside the engine and preferably a place you don't want there to be smoke and fire in reality. Yeah, I think this is good. Now it's inside the uh, engine. We're going to call this particle emitter. Now the next step is to essentially set up the projections. So uh, pipe the, let's also just split the view here for a second. I would like to have my render in the uh, second viewer and the 3D space in the left viewer. So pipe the jet engine footage into the camera 3D. In the camera 3D, unlock it. Uh, go into image, disable image plane, and in projection, enable camera projection and set it to height. Now, if we create a render 3D node after the um, Alembic merge, go into the node and under lighting, enable lighting. Now we have essentially, oh, what's this? You can see it's not matching. And that is because Blender and Fusion have different camera settings. So in the film back menu of the 3D camera, you have to switch the resolution gate fit from height to width. And you also need to do this for the projections. Now you can see everything is working as it should. And we effectively have a 3D model here in 3D space with the footage projected onto it. Now we can um, do all sorts of cool tricks in compositing. Oh, and also if you switch the 3D render from render type software to hardware, uh, I find we get a bit better performance. Now to get a better sense of the scene we are in, uh, we can add an HDRI sphere. It won't cast actual lighting and stuff, but we've already done that in Blender. So we don't need to do that job here, but we need the visual reference. Uh, so add another merge 3D, drag it a bit down, and then uh, you can also click this button here to quickly create a shape 3D. Let's pipe that in. Now, if we view the uh, new merge in the, in the left viewer, hit the new shape, click it, control F to center it in frame. Let's change this from a plane to a sphere and zoom out. Let's just increase the size of the sphere to something huge like 50. Let's also uh, use this um, HDRI from Polyhaven. Just pipe that into the shape. Let's also move this 
upwards for a bit better control. Now you can see that uh, piping the image into the sphere is doing essentially nothing. And that is because we are essentially in a 3D pipe that has projections enabled. So if we go into the settings of the shape 3D, go into the material of this, you can see that the material settings is set to receive lighting and shadows. But if we uncheck this, then you can see now we get the picture. So now that we pipe this image into this shape, you can see that we have these uh, weird uh, banding issues here on the texture. And to uh, fix this, uh, quite simply, just go into the renderer 3D uh, and change the maximum tex texture depth to float 16. This 3D scene per now is a bit incomplete because we're lacking all the clouds and the sky, but adding these will affect performance quite a bit. Let's just keep this as is. And let's get started on uh, adding our particles in 3D. So 